Yo, ladies and gentlemen, I'm MC Zinman, and welcome back to Space Engineers Weekly Workshop Roundup number 13. As always, I'm bringing you three of the hot ships and three of the hot mods from the Space Engineers Steam Workshop page for the last week. Jumping right into it, we have Edelheed, Crew Quarters, Decorative Vimes, WIP, DX9, and DX11 by Edelheed. The set includes uh, three single bed versions, two double bed versions, two bunk bed versions, three black leather couches, the, uh, that's those there, and two bathrooms that we already scrolled by with a sink and a toilet, and one storage locker and a coffee slash beverage machine. Unfortunately, I didn't actually see the coffee slash beverage machine um, in my, uh, well, in the G menu when I tried to open it up. But yeah, so this is the weapons locker. As you can see, it looks very cool. It's got a, sort of a glowing back there, a couple of machine guns there. It works like a storage container, and down here, We've got, it's insane by the way, it's insane the amount of detail that goes into this model. We've got some clips down there and some ammunition, but yeah, like I said, it works like a storage, uh, well, like a storage container, so you can put basically anything in it, which is kind of neat indeed. Now look at this, this is actually one of my favorite details. You can even make out the word warning on the sticker on the side of the gun. Really, really awesome. So, yeah, and then this is the toilet right here. Well, this is one of the two toilet blocks. The other one is just right there. As you can see, well, as you uh, were able to see, it was just basically the same thing with the toilet. This is one of the beds. Um, now, the texture on this one is a little bit, well, worse. It's nowhere near as high fidelity or high res, rather. And then these are the three couches. They look very comfortable indeed. They almost remind me of that sort of sectional couch from The Sims 2 and The Sims 3, I believe. Yeah, they look pretty cool. So you got one with, uh, one without a table and two with a table. Uh, the two, uh, the uh, one, uh, this one here is a double couch and a single chair off to the side. Now you can't actually sit in this one. You can sit in the other two. Yeah, but yeah, I'm uh, just sitting in the one with the table to demonstrate. Hi guys, what's up? Yeah, having a good time. I'm having a good time. Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, pretty cool. So next up, this isn't really actually a uh, review. Uh, this is just something, this is just the second mod, but it's reworked armor ramps mod DX11 Ray WIP by SE Modder 4. Uh, it's got over 40 blocks. Well, I believe it's yeah, it's, it's exactly 40 blocks. A huge number of blocks. I didn't really get a lot of footage uh, of uh, of the blocks, but basically these are just sort of meant to... Uh, these are just sort of meant to extend your repertoire as far as shipbuilding blocks are concerned. You can make a lot better, a lot more refined and sleek designs with these. Um, they're a rework of Uncle Stay's armor ramps mod, uh, but these are sort of DX11 ready. I know it says DX11 ready in the title, but I tried running them in a DX11 version of this world, and they were almost completely untextured, so not quite there. I don't think unless I have another mod that's interfering with them, but I don't think I do. Yeah. So I'm just doing a quick fly through to show you all of the freaking blocks because there's no way I could actually go over like each block one by one because there are too many of them. Uh, these are for both small ships and large ships. Um, so you've got blocks that are uh, like two by one by one, three by one by one, one by one by one. Uh, quite a huge variety of blocks. In fact, I use the, uh, I used Uncle Stay's uh, original version of this mod, the Armor Ramps mod, in quite a number of my own designs, and let me tell you, they look absolutely, absolutely incredible. Um, of, of course, uh, there is sort of an alternative to this in the base game, uh, because Keen sort of implemented a few of these blocks in the in the in the base game but they're sort of like cut up so you've got 
uh, like for instance armor ramp 2 by one by one base uh, in uh, in fact uh, that's how I made the station the sort of wavy pattern on the top I used Keen's uh, uh, I used Keen's armor ramps because I you know really don't want all that mo many mods active in this world but yeah so these are a little bit better because they're a little bit longer and you sort of well they come pre-built like you don't have a two by one by one block cut up into two one by one by one sections so kind of useful kind of handy if you're not the kind of person who takes like the tip of a one by one uh, uh, the tip of a two by one block and uh, tries to use it for other things so now we are moving on to DX11 Shell Corps Military by Shell Stool. Shell Stool Corporation presents Military Expanding the Universe since May 2014. Uh, mod details and all blocks are in a Shell Corps tab. They do not appear in the All tab, so that's something to keep in mind. The large and small ship variants, DX9 and DX11 uh, support available blocks right now. Just this one GAT. Uh, that's pretty much it, but it's kind of cool that it, that this is compatible with small ships because and I've got my engineer in there for no discernible reason at all because that's what I do but so yeah it's, it, it's kind of cool that this is a that this is available for small ships because not a lot of turrets are available for small ships this is a, sort of a test run for uh, for it on the life set. Don't worry, we're getting we're getting to that later, and don't worry, it won't be damaged when I do get to it. But, so yeah, uh, just laying a long burst out right here at the life set. So now that I'm done, let's actually go and well uh, continue. For one thing, yeah, as you can see, it's tearing through quite quickly. I was surprised, actually how quickly this just sort of got through even even light uh, even light armor uh, I mean obviously yeah light armor is not the heftiest stuff in the game that's why they call it light armor but it just pretty much tears through as you can see we've already destroyed uh, well yeah we've already destroyed one of the light sets reverse thrusters uh, didn't quite get the side thruster there but we've pretty much punched a hole straight through the light sets armor with uh, well, a pretty brief, yeah, that's not good, a pretty brief burst all told. So, yeah, and speaking of, yeah, we destroy it, now we're going to review it. That's the way we do here at MC's Inn, man. But, yeah, so, it's the Tuno Life Set by B-Soldier, four-year sci-fi warrior slash assassin slash ninja needs no mods. Yes, survive already from front to back the ship has one battery one interior turret two cockpits each 12 small reactors two doors two landing gears uh, one small cargo container one assembler two ventilation fans one oxygen tank two arc furnaces one oxygen generator one cryo container and uh, one medical bay, bay and one jump block and this is yes in case you're wondering this is the life set from the game warframe and for those of you who don't know what Warframe is, it's a pretty awesome game. It's made by Digital Extremes, and it's almost like Mass Effect with Ninjutsu. It's a third-person uh, MMO sort of shooter. It, it, it's, re it's really fun. Uh, but the thing is, there's not really a cover system per se, so you have to move around, and you get all of these sort of awesome moves like wall runs and things like that. Really, really cool, awesome game. So now we're headed into the ship through the door on the bottom, and this is this only has two rooms, and is, is pretty much as accurate to the game as it can possibly be. But so up here we've got the cockpit, and everything's sort of compacted down in, in this ship. It's really quite uh, amazing how how well this ship makes use of such a limited space, but. So yeah, those are the reactors, and then we come in here, med bays at the end, you got your cargo container on the left, um, I believe that's, I don't know what that is on the right, but up top you got your oxygen tanks, and then your cryo chamber over here on the left. So, not a lot of stuff, but pretty much everything you need 
to survive in Space Engineers. So, uh, ominous panning shot go. Another, uh, another cargo container back there. Uh, so flying it, when I flew it, I was actually surprised at how fast this thing was. I mean, yeah, it's got only two large thrusters on the back, but if you look at the weight over there on the right hand side, it's over, it's only over half a million kilograms, which for technically a large ship is extremely, extremely light. So I was very surprised uh, to see exactly how this thing handled. It turns on a dime and it's got plenty of forward thrust for the size. Uh, Side thrust and rear thrust, not so much, but up and down thrust, it's uh, it's uh, pretty pretty decent there. As you can see, I'm trying to turn, and I've only got one puny uh, side thrust right there going off. Same for the right hand side, obviously, because this is mirrored after all. But yeah, it, it, it's a fairly good handling ship. It's very very nimble, kind of like in the in the loading screens for the game. Yeah, well, obviously not entirely like that because the long screens for the game uh, depict the Lyset as being absolutely ridiculously nimble. But it's pretty good, especially for, an in for a ship in Space Engineers. Uh, so yeah, for forward thrust, we do also have two small... Th yeah, we've got two small thrusters, it looks like, alongside the large thrusters. I didn't notice that before when I was testing it. But so, uh, trying to land it on top of the station. Now, this is a fairly complex, uh, sort of difficult place to land because while I do have a lot of space up front and out back, I don't have a lot of space side to side, so that ship has to be quite nimble for me to be able to land it. And as we're about to see, even with my terrible landing skills, I do manage to get it landed fairly swiftly. It does have a gat on the bottom also, one of the vanilla gats. That was sticky keys turning on there, so I had to deal with that very quickly. But, yeah, I it only takes me a couple of seconds, and then I get it landed. So, very, very easy ship to park. Um, it's got plenty of storage also. Quite a good ship. Really, uh, really, really good for exploration and things like that. And, Especially survival, it's just, it, I can see this being a very good starter ship for when you don't have a lot of resources and you can't quite afford to build something as huge as like a freaking Dawnstar, Dawnstar Corvette or anything like that. So, pleasantly surprised, yes, very much so. But moving on, we have the Low Rover by Gesu. Uh, Gesu. He's one of the biggest space engineers there is. Ecto Sage, man, I was I was fanboying so hard at the opportunity to finally review something by Ecto Sage. Now I have the opportunity. Yes, my space engineer's mission is complete. Yeah, this is a low rover, and he did a video on it, uh, actually. And yeah, it's um he had he had three different versions in that video. He had this one, which doesn't have gyroscopes or thrusters, and he had one with thrusters, and then he had one sort of stripped down. Um, this is sort of the underside of it here. Um, uh, I, I'm not sure exactly how to describe... Um, by the way, yeah, uh, just a quick look on the inside. We do have three medium cargo containers. And it's all piped up. There's a central pipe that, um, well, it's got an oxygen system just ahead of the firewall uh, right there. But it's got an oxygen system that pipes into a couple of reactors and then to the cockpit. So it is fully oxygenated and pretty much, well, it should be planet ready, but there's a very big asterisk to that, which we're about to, which we're about to find out very quickly here. So, I'm uh, hopping into the low rover now, I believe. Yeah, I'm hopping into the low rover and turning on my HUD, and as we're about to see, it's, um, well, it's it's quite slow. It's, uh, it tops out at literally 29 miles an hour. That's what 13 meters a second is. Just over uh, 13 meters a second. 
It does handle fairly nicely for the speed, though. I mean, it's not like... It, it's pretty much within the range that the game intends you to be moving with rovers like this. Really anything faster and you can find yourself sliding all over the place. At 14 meters a second, 14.1 meters a second, 0.2. Yeah, it's um, it's a little bit slow. It's also not very good at off-roading as I am just about to uh, find out firsthand. Uh, it's quite bad at off-roading. As you can see, I'm, uh, I try to go up this sort of incline here and, well, I do sort of get up it, but then the low rover decides I'm just going to slide right back down again and we're going to go on flat ground whether you like it or not, MCZ. So, I say screw you, low rover, we're going up this whether you like it or not, and then the land rover and the ground co uh, combine and say no at the same time. So I smash into that sort of cliffside thing and damage the left front fender. Yeah, this was to be become a recurring theme in my adventures with the low rover. Uh, quite terrible at off-roading this thing is. I tried again, this time trying to get a different angle. Unfortunately, I don't have the speed because the low rover isn't very uh, isn't very fast uh, by default. So eventually I do give up on uh, give up on that notion. I believe I give it another go here. Uh, whatever the case, I was fairly disappointed by the low rover's lack of off-roading ability. But I guess the, that's not really the point of the low rover, is it? I mean, it, it's sort of... It's not very fast. So it's not the sort of... It's not the sort of vehicle that you would go uh, up very steep inclines with. Really, it's uh, sort of the thing... Sort of the kind of thing that you would... Uh, uh, that you would roam around on flat ground with and then... Uh, and then... For more extreme offering, you'd have something else. This is basically just a prospecting vehicle. Uh, this terrain, uh, I was actually kind of surprised I was able to even get up that first hill, but then it just runs out of steam. It just really runs out of steam. And I can't get to go uh, any further, so I try to get a running start here. Uh, as you can see, I've screwed the front end up quite badly. I also scraped it on some terrain between uh, between cuts here. Uh, yeah, the as you can see, well, as you're about to be able to see, I think I raked the right side on some terrain, so it's pretty wide here. Yeah, uh, as you can uh, as you can see. It's just sort of damage right there. Quite, uh, well, uh, quite disconcerting, really. I was a little bit disappointed with the low rover, uh, all said and done. But uh, then again, Ectosage sort of, uh, well, he built this uh, low rover sort of blind. He, uh, 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 in the video that he showcased, the low rover in it was on flat ground, so he didn't really have that many challenges to overcome. Uh, whatever the whatever the problem is, I'm sure he will uh, work it out before planets uh, are uh, before planets are a thing, and it will really be worthy of the Ectosage name. Uh, but before we go, we've got a cool little penning shot over the top. Yeah. Low Rover disappointment from a great author, uh, quite frankly. Uh, I really wish you'd release the one with thrusters on the bottom. That would be awesome. Uh, so now we are moving on to stock KUS Eintracht Class Industrial Station UA UASC UESC even contest number 16 by Tyriosh. Tyriosh? Tyriosh. Uh, the Unterhoft was an old station design created by the KUS faction in the early 2060s and used in asteroid fields and the orbits of various Saturn moons. 
to provide a safe sleeping place for mining crews operating in the area and refining ores and materials. Today in 2077, this is one of the last stations of its kind. Over the years, various things were added and improved, but visitors will still notice its age. And yes, it's very apparent how old this is in lore. It's very angular and almost sort of Star Wars-ish and or sort of like Mass Effect-ish. But it looks really cool. That's that's really what makes it look so awesome is that sort of retro sci-fi feel. We get a panning shot over the top because freaking awesome. That's why it, it looks like an old 80s shooter. I mean, come on. Why would you not like that panning shot? Yeah. And yeah, it's got some cargo ports before I forget to mention those. It's got some cargo ports on the outside near the engineering area. But yeah, so, and by the way, prepare to phase through quite a few doors. All the doors are on timers, which is uh, kind of inconvenient for me. Uh, because that means I have to pan through all the doors. They're on timers, so when you open one, it waits a few seconds and then it closes. So it's it's handy for keeping me in, but not so handy for, um, well, filming. But so, uh, coming in through the main hallway here, we've got an engineering bay with some windows to the outside with a very scenic view of space. By the way, this skybox is officially badass awesome. I love the skybox. I love the way it makes everything look. But so coming back out of that and then going to the right to the left as you're coming in through the door we go up the elevator shaft to the second floor. Yes that was the only room on the first floor. But uh, going ahead and to the right here we end up in some crew quarters and yeah pretty scenic crew quarters. I think these are actually senior crew quarters. Uh, they sleep six. By the way, this station has no mods, so even though it's technically a world, you can use it as a blueprint, which is something that everybody loves, and Tyriosh, you're awesome for doing that. Um, but yeah, so it sleeps six uh, very comfortably. It's even got a little bit of a vent there to dry out and completely dehydrate whoever sits next to it. But And then the final room uh, on this part of the... Uh, top floor is this sort of meeting slash CIC slash whatever uh, room here you know, where all the crew can sit around and type on their computers and uh, have meetings and be antisocial at the same time because they don't have to talk to each other because they've got computers. Oh, and yeah, we've got uh, two cargo, uh, two um, inventory screens here. We've actually got a lot of these because this is sort of meant as a, the sort of station uh, that you would go to like uh, send off a bunch of materials to be refined. It's an industrial station so uh, that's what it does. But going back out of the door and then down the hall uh, I believe to the oh yes to the right here um, we've got a mid bay uh, that looks quite cool with one cryo chamber and some tubing up there and then back here behind this is just an empty space uh, I don't know why I went back there I don't know why I even thought anything was back there <laughs> but yeah so coming out of here and then heading down the hall again uh, to the left you will see an oxygen uh, vent there and then I believe we're going to the left here. Yes, we are going to the left. And these are more crew quarters. Uh, this one, uh, this time, sleeps four. It's uh, it's actually quite a cool looking room from certain angles, as I'm about to show you. And we've got one passenger seat there for some reason. Yeah, it's actually pretty decent looking from some angles. Uh, I do like the way you set the lights to look like sort of old light bulbs. That looks kind of cool. And then directly across the hall, and a little bit to the left, but almost directly across the hall, we have the oxygen management room with the vent in there and the oxygen, I believe the oxygen tanks to the left. 
So the final door heads out to the majestic airlock. I forgot there's an airlock between uh, the final door and the hangar uh, to the majestic hangar. There we go. And it's got an exploration ship. And well, it's got two exploration ships. One's actually outside the hangar, the rear hangar. But and it's got one that's already hooked up to the conveyor system right there. Uh, the door to the production wing is right there. Quite a nice spacious hangar for all of your ships. And it's got connectors uh, uh, every uh, few yards or so so that you can e just easily hook up your ships, which is always quite nice. And now through the airlock to the production wing, which is sort of this uh, out in a, in a, sort of this out in space sort of area. Down here we've got a gravity generator. Nothing really special. Um, just sort of a little added detail, a little added detour, uh, what have you. And then uh, up here uh, we have well, a slow panning shot first, but up here we have a cockpit on the left. There we go. We've actually got two cockpits, I believe, but I cut out the other one because I just didn't want to waste any time. And then up here, we've got uh, pr probably the most beautiful freaking single area I've ever seen on a space station because of the, uh, because of the skybox. Yeah, look at this. Uh, this catwalk sort of exists so that you can get to the satellites, antennas, and uh, what, what have you on the top of the station it just to sort of allow you to actually service those. So I cut out quite a lot, uh, quite a bit of the low paying shot. But yeah, so to get to one of the satellites, you actually detour sort of off the catwalk and then onto the roof. And then you get to this satellite, which doesn't doesn't actually work. It's purely aesthetic, but it looks really cool. You have to freaking admit. Look at the way. Uh, just pause right now, and just look at the way. You know, just look at the way that it sort of catches the light there. Very cool. And then we've got a sort of GoPro shot, uh, panning shot there. Very awesome station. Like. 11, 11 out of 10 for stations. Beautiful. Well laid out. Got all the stuff you could possibly need. Go get it. Go download it now. But if you like this video, then go ahead and bits like that like button. If you really, really liked it and you want to see more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hey, I've been MC Zinman. You've been awesome. I'll see you guys in the next video. MCZ out.